Hey dear beloved, welcome to this video and also welcome to this brand new series because uh, once again uh, this is going to be a, seri uh, a series of different videos I don't know how many of course we'll see as we go and this time uh, I want to talk about the end times on earth the end times however also beyond the eras of the nations the eras of the nations is a topic that I had uh, I think last year or the, or the year before I had uh, gone through it as a, as a subject so there's going to be some repetition some repeatings but this it's this is going to be a lot bigger it is going to be a lot more beyond the eras of the nations and also um, uh, it's going to extend until the end times because the end times are let's say future prophecy so that's also the more interesting part of this study however uh, uh, make no mistake about this if we look at the eras of the nations itself it's very very interesting and if we ponder on god's uh, directions in a genius way uh, how he has uh, placed everything in time and space this is marvelous what god did and it's fantastic to also study that on top of that of course we as the body of christ are to have our disposition uh, on the things above and that's what i'm doing as well definitely that's standard uh, procedure with me however it's i personally also like to study some things that are to be regarded as a a kind of a puzzle because with regard to prophecy especially uh, uh, on the end times then we know that scripture is a bit cryptic uh, especially if we read the book of daniel or revelation there are some cryptic expressions cryptic sentences and that is interesting it makes me uh, a bit curious about okay what is meant there how can i find what is really meant and how can i connect the dots that's why i'm also interesting and also uh, interested in this topic sorry and also um, understanding more with regard to israel which isn't our target group which isn't our evangel but understanding more gives us more insight in god's plan in god's way of working if we see the bigger picture including israel and the and the ratio between israel and the nations uh paul's evangel then we will see how god has approached everything onto of course his ultimate purpose with all of creation it is fantastic in that sense we learn to understand god better so i hope it is clear uh, why I do this also and why I also study these kinds of topics and we will now turn to the slide so the title of this topic is the end times beyond beyond the eras of the nations and of course I can only exhort you to also behold the genius of God's plan very important first of all the standard slides I'm going through them quickly facts and principles about God's Word we see the bullet points please go through them and uh, keep on pondering them uh, as much as possible especially when you uh, when it's not really ingrained in your system this is very important and again I'm going to emphasize the last one a jigsaw puzzle is a good description that represents another function of God's Word and we know the drill just mentioning it very briefly we find uh, jams here and there but we cannot connect them yet so what do we do we park them in the back of our mind 
until there are enough of these gems to fit them together into a bigger picture. When you know the bigger picture already and you find additional gems, then of course you will enrich the bigger picture. So this is the method to approach uh, study script, studying scripture, one of the methods by the way, and of course meanings, etc, etc. So take this into account because it is always one of the better methods because the chance that puzzle pieces fit together into a bigger picture is very small. So if it fits, then the chances that this is truth are of course a lot greater, a lot bigger. So that's why. We know already that all of God's word is for everyone. It's the truth and it's beneficial for teaching, exposure, correction and discipline in righteousness. But we also know that God's word is not addressed to everyone. So we know that God's word in regard to correctly cutting is called the word of truth. So again, if you do not correctly cut God's word, then you are not in truth anymore. Even if you use God's word, still it's not truth anymore with regard to what you are uh, preaching or teaching because you do not cut it correctly. You do not make the right distinction. And how should we make distinctions? Through these three dimensions so every dimension has its own kind of distinction that's the point the first dimension is evangels these are the messages the well messages and they lead believing them leads to one of two target groups israelites or gentiles or who are non-israelites the second dimension is eras so periods and the question becomes for which period was this intended a certain passage text etc and there are two kinds of eras the first one is with regard to the distance between god and creation that is eons that's an eon five eons and the second one is with regard to god's government on the earth with regard to how things are uh, operating on the earth and those are administrations and within those you have dispensations so that's the second one and the third dimension is the perspective or the angle is it absolute or relative very important is it from god's uh, angle from god's point of view or from man's point of view okay so then we will start our new journey first let's make some remarks about the end times most people have some knowledge about what's to take place in the end times which are very close now as probably most of you already believe and know uh, yet, there are also folks who have little or no knowledge regarding what's, to, what's about to expire in the end times. So in order to take everyone's position into account as best as possible, we will blend an earlier study about the eras of the nations with recent discoveries that are very, very, very interesting. In my view, of course, I'm just sharing my findings. There are some very peculiar things going on if we study the developments happening in the end times. So this study will further expound on these phenomena. The end times will be a period of increasing spiritual darkness. I hope you know that. <clears throat> let me just uh, let me finish the sentence. This spiritual darkness contains a mix of all that God dislikes. Let me stop here before we continue and explain that this increasing spiritual darkness is very important to understand in, in what sense. 
we know that a, a day in scripture starts not with the morning but it starts with sunset right so the day starts the moment the sun is not visible anymore that is the start of a day in scripture so if the moment that the sun is not visible anymore is it very dark no it's not yet black dark as sackcloth not yet it gets in it gets uh, uh, twilight first you have twilight and the twilight becomes darker and darker and then the night uh, enters so to speak and then um, and that goes further and further into darkness until the deepest darkness is reached and from there on it gets less and less dark and lighter and lighter so this is very important because there is an expression, a very important and a very well-known one too, called the Day of the Lord. Right? And that scriptural day is more than a thousand years. The Day of the Lord. It will end with the burning of the earth and the heavens. So, and that will be happening at the end of the fourth eon. So, at the end of of the millennial kingdom so if the day of the Lord starts as a day a scriptural day what do we expect we expect twilight that's how it starts when does the Sun set I personally believe that the Sun sets at the snatching away the moment the body of Christ gets snatched away to the heavens then it is sunset and from there on it's twilight it's a there there starts a, a period of false peace so people will have it good they there, there will be prosperity there will be peace that's how it will feel even stronger it will feel great on the earth great it will feel uh, in the atmosphere like there is love and peace there this will be an experience that humanity has never experienced before that's how deceptive that will be that period initially so but then it becomes darker and darker because people will get more and more decadent so let's go from there so I hope you see that or uh, see this already all right so this increasing spiritual darkness contains a mix of all that god dis dislikes such as mixing of species whether through nature natural uh, me means or um, technological means other dna manip manipulations manipulations lovelessness decadence and especially self-glorification which is idolatry of course also there will be developments that made John the Apostle John marvel greatly while perceiving the woman in Revelation 17 6 you can read about that his marvel is great that has a reason of course we will come to that what is so very typical about the woman our view on this will also be shared in this study also we will go through a highly telling vision that was received by a very well-known man oh well, i would say let me say reasonably well-known man in scripture we will see just very soon who that is okay we will go through some typical features about both the dragon mentioned in revelation and the beast also in revelation that will be rising out of the sea c stands for the gentile peoples besides one very interesting feature will be compared with another figure in revelation 
and we will share our view on what this means and how to perceive what will happen soon. Yes, I know I pro it probably sounds quite cryptic and it is also deliberately done, but everything will become clear during the course of this study. So I hope this is clear up till now for you. So let's continue. The vision was given to none else than Noah. What was the vision? First he saw a vision which he didn't understand. Firstly, this vision consisted of an olive tree surrounded by other trees. Next, there were eight figures and I think possibly mountains that is the meaning of those figures that's because that's the scriptural explanation in my view and they look like pyramids kind of pyramids but i think they um, they depict mountains and these pyramids these mountains are made from different metals does it ring a bell already different metals these figures represent empires with a certain uh, common characteristic so these empires consist of these metals this is the order in which noah saw the metal empires so there were eight empires the first row consists of lead so the first empire is from lead and the second is from clay which by the way is soft metal did you know that there is a large component of aluminum in clay so clay is a kind of soft metal and then the middle row the third one is from gold that empire the fourth one is from silver the the uh, fifth one is bronze or did I say from I think it's off bronze not sure and which is a copper alloy so you could say copper or bronze doesn't matter and the sixth one is iron F next the last row consists of two again the seventh one is lead again oh yes and the eighth one is clay again so eight empires three rows two four and two total eight so such a vision is very helpful and it is also quite telling when you understand more of what is behind this and this helped me personally a great lot to study more and to discover more things uh, let me show you the vision, a depiction of the vision, and then we will end this video. So, this is the vision of the metal empires of Noah. Here you see the three rows, two, four, two, and you have lead. It also says stone here. Lead, soft metal, clay, gold, silver, copper or bronze and iron and the last row is lead again and clay as well but first you see in the bottom this olive tree which is surrounded by trees so of course in later in this study we will circle back to this vision and of course then we will explain what it means and uh, what it stands for in my view at least and uh, from there on I think things will get more and more clear so let me thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you next time see you then bye